Aloha Kako. Hello everyone. My name is Yanti. I'm currently teaching at Atmajaya Catholic University of Indonesia in Jakarta. In this presentation, my collaborators and I are presenting about recognizing relationships in capacity building and training in the Nassau documentation project. We share our ongoing capacity building and training efforts in the Nassau speech community, a unique multilingual speech community in Sumatra, Indonesia. Unlike other training efforts in Indonesia that typically provide intensive training to members from multiple communities and in a relatively short period of time, this effort aims to build capacity by working closely with a single community over the long term. We discuss how these efforts depend upon fostering healthy relationships. We specifically demonstrate the importance of fostering and implications for language maintenance efforts in the future. Let me briefly talk about capacity building and training in language documentation. Capacity building and training activities are increasingly an essential component of language documentation projects. This trend results from the recognition that, first, linguists have an ethical responsibility to train community members. Second, language documentations are more comprehensive with input from a diverse group of people when capacity building and training are a part of the project. Third, involvement of insider-outsider, or in our case, junior Indonesian academics or researchers, as well as community members promote sustainability of language documentation. Training models and programs have recognized that training is bidirectional and crucially depends upon fostering relationships, but there is not a one-size-fits-all model to capacity building and training. Different groups of linguists have conducted capacity building and training activities in four language documentation in Indonesia. One model is the training of members of various speech communities. Florian Himmelman, 2010, for example, reports on two language documentation workshops in Bali. The participants were faculty members or graduate students from different institutions who were also members of various local languages. Jyuk Siohara and Yanti, 2007, presents a similar approach. The participants were undergraduates who were also members of various speech communities. Another model of training of members of... Um, another model is the training of members of local languages and involving U.S. graduate students. Gary Halton's project, for example, involves University of Hawaii students and native speakers of local languages in East Nusa Tenggara. Another project of this type is led by Peter Cole and Gabriela Hermon of the University of Delaware in collaboration with Asako Shiohara from Tokyo University of Foreign Studies and Jeremy Baluk of Tiba Cakrawala Nusantara Kupang and myself one difference between the two programs is that the graduate students who participated in our project originated from different U.S. universities. While each program is unique and has its own prospects, the project we report here is different from the projects we mentioned. The participants of our, our training were members of the same speech community which happens to be a multilingual community, that is the NASA, the NASA speech community. Thank you, Yanti. Uh, in this portion of the uh, presentation, I'm going to share a little bit about the NASA speech community before moving on to uh, the training and capacity building activities as a part of this project. Uh, so uh, the Nassau speech community is about 3,000 people and is comprised of three villages uh, in southern Bengkulu province, uh, which is uh, in southwest Sumatra and is marked by the uh, yellow dot uh, in the uh, map uh, to the right. Um, and so while uh, there are similar cultural practices to the neighboring groups, uh, the Nassau speech community drastically differs from its neighbors. 
So uh, first, the Nassau speech community is multilingual. Um, so they speak Nassau, which is unique uh, to these three villages and quite different from the surrounding languages, uh, as well as Kawar, Kawar which is spoken uh, throughout uh, Southern Bengkulu province by about 40,000 people, primarily along the coast, uh, as well as South Paris and Malay, uh, a variety of South Paris and Malay uh, called Sumandu, which is spoken in the highlands of, uh, of Southwest Sumatra, uh, just to the east of the uh, Nassau villages. And uh, members of the Nassau speech community also regularly use uh, colloquial and standard varieties of Indonesian, which we'll come back to in a couple of slides. So uh, the Nassau uh, villages are comprised of uh, Kawar, Semenda, uh, Javanese, Batak, among many other groups. Um, and, but for, and for Nassau speakers, uh, they report being able to speak uh, at least uh, Kawar. Uh, all the Nassau speakers that uh, that we talk to. So it, it appears that to know Nassau uh, is to also know Kawar. Some also reported uh, being able to speak uh, Sumunda, uh, a variety of South Paris and Malay, which is commonly heard throughout the villages uh, as well. So the Kawar and Sumunda people, which make up the majority of outsiders uh, in, in, uh, in the Nassau villages, uh, rarely uh, learn uh, to speak uh, Nassau and uh, rarely speak Nassau. There are, of course, a couple of exceptions of uh, people who have lived in the Nassau villages for quite a long time, but it is quite rare. Uh, there are also um, Javanese and Batak people uh, from outside the region who have, uh, who have lived there. Uh, and uh, these people typically learn Kaur uh, and not Nassau. Um, and those who uh, have only recently come typically use some variety of colloquial Indonesian uh, with uh, Nassau people. So uh, there's been very little research and very little documentation uh, done on Nassau. Uh, linguists uh, didn't really even uh, know Nassau was a separate language until about uh, 2007. So uh, there's an old word list uh, done by a Dutch colonial uh, officer in 1895. Um, and then there's a short survey by Anderback and Aprilani, uh, which was conducted based on about two days of, of, of field work uh, in 2007 and published in 2013. Um, and so there's uh, basically no other documentation until the beginning um, of this uh, project. So uh, in this project, uh, uh, we are uh, seeking to uh, document the multilingual practices of the Nassau speech community. So uh, our primary outcomes are, uh, one, we'd like to build a large audiovisual uh, corpus uh, documenting everyday and culturally significant events, create materials for the Nassau speech community, which uh, at the very least includes a multilingual dictionary of Nassau, and we're still under, um, uh, we're still discussing uh, with the community what exactly, what products they would, would like in the language. Um, and uh, we're also gonna produce uh, linguistic descriptions of uh, the languages in this region, as well as um, other research papers. And uh, the final, uh, maybe most important outcome of this project is to provide training uh, to a PhD student in the US, a junior scholar from Indonesia, both who are uh, co-authors uh, on this presentation, as well as uh, members from the speech community. So the team is made up of myself uh, and, uh, and Yanti, who is my primary uh, research counterpart and the head, of, um, the head of the Center for Languages and Cultures at Atmajaya in Jakarta, uh, as well as Jacob Hakim, who's a PhD student from the University of Hawaii, and Angi Deno Sukmawati, who is a researcher um, at the uh, Indonesian Institute of Science. Uh, both uh, of uh, these last two people we are hoping to, uh, who will both provide training and uh, receive training. Uh, and, um, and so the community members uh, as a part of this project include uh, Johan Safri and Wawan Sahrosi. And uh, these, two, uh, these two people um, will uh, be working primarily with uh, Nassau materials. Uh, and then there's Anton uh, Supriyadi, who will be working with uh, primarily Kaur materials. 
um, and then Hendi Ferisa, who will be working with the South Barrison Malay materials. I'm now going to turn it over uh, to Angi uh, to present about training. Thank you, Brad. In this part, I will talk about our training workshop, which is held last February 2020. Here are some quick backgrounds on the members of NASA Documentation Project. There are three community members come from the NASA speech community, you know each other well. And these three men have no experience in doing such training in language documentation project. And one member comes from nearby the Savai Highland and has worked with PI since 2008. So he has experience in this kind of training, in this kind of project. And majority of community members have bachelor's degrees and work as teachers, social workers, and or farmer. PI met all of them while living in Nassau and the Samak village. There are also experienced researcher and general scholars. So we help the community member in this training. Goals of the training workshop is to build capacity by providing equipment such as laptops and headphones and training. We provide training on how to make transcription, translation, and closing. And we also introduce Elon and Flex. And there are also discussions on issues such as orthography and spelling. The lessons were prepared to teach a new concept and then provide members a lot of time to practice. We did five days workshop. On the first and second day, we did transcription using inline. Uh, as we mentioned before, there are community members who have no experience in this kind of training. So first we introduce them, what is Elan, how to open Elan, how to make new files in Elan, how to choose videos, how to choose audios, how to make tier, how to choose speakers and etc. After the basic training, we let them practice by themselves. And of, of course we guide them. And there are a lot of discussion in this part. And on the third and fourth day, we did closing using flex. And same as before, we introduced what is flag, how to use flag, how to open new files, how to make new entry, how to make new closing, how to put it on the flags and etc. And on the fifth day, we made buku panduan. So in this training, we transcribed the conversation from the audio and video files. We did it word for word. And because of that, uh, there are a lot of discussion on orthography and spelling. The community member is actively provide the discussion on the orthography and spelling. And after that, we translate the conversation from Nassau, Kaur, and Bismahar Semende to Indonesian and English. We try to convey the meaning from original language as close as possible to the target language. So that, that's why there are a lot of discussion on the sense of meaning because uh, what we want to convey is this, but there are a lot of discussion. What is the real meaning of this word? And then we make a glossary with the words extracted from the transcription and we make an alphabetical list. We use Elan and Flex in this process. So we use Elan to make annotation and transcription and translation from the audio and video. Elan is a tier base, so we can make separate tier based on speakers, based on issues, and there are also discussion in this Elan. And then we use Flex to make list of words and phrases. There are two main parts of Flex, which is lexicon and grammar and we can make glossary and dictionary from this. The output of the training is buku panduan. Buku panduan can be used by the community members as guide to operate the recording tools and the software, such as how to record a high quality audios and videos, how to use Elan and flags, how to save and store the recording files, and etc. 
basically buku panduan is a written version of what we did on the training. This buku panduan can be used by the community members for a long period, even after this project is complete. That's it for me. And now Jacob will continue the presentation. Thank you, Angi. Uh, in this section of the presentation, I'd like to talk about the concept of continued training as it applies to our workflow and uh, methodology. So as Angi described, the training was intended to provide our team members with the equipment and skills necessary to transcribe uh, independently conversations that were recorded in the fall of 2019. And so uh, the project is ongoing and it's meant to be ongoing for the duration of this whole documentation project. Um, so every week, the transcribers send their progress to one of the researchers who checks all of it and, and provides feedback based on the transcription conventions or whatever kind of feedback might help the transcription be more accurate or more clear. Um, and this pro process is ongoing. So there's a, a comments tier in the lawn where there's a constant communication between transcriber and the checker. Um, and so this is a kind of continuous training that's built into the transcription process. Uh, it's a bi-directional learning process. So the transcribers and the person checking the file are both learning and it's a conversation that happens between the two of them. Uh, and it, it results in an increased technical proficiency in Elan and discourse transcription for both the transcriber and the checker. And it also helps in building metalinguistic awareness in the transcribers. Also, this project has involved some new methods and techniques. So we were able to send some recording equipment to Nassau, to one of the transcribers, and eventually the whole team will get to use this equipment. Um, so we've added a component of training in video and audio recording. Um, so there have already been several conversational recordings, and we're planning on asking them to record a wider variety of genres and hopefully more naturalistic settings. So here's a screenshot from one of the recordings that Johan made. This was a response to the limitations of travel during the pandemic. So uh, as we will talk about in the next slide, we had hoped to travel um, to Nassau much sooner, but because we can't, we wanted to continue documenting Nassau and we wanted to help extend these skills to the transcribers so that they weren't just transcribing, but also creating new materials to work on. So, I think we are not alone in experiencing many challenges over the last year, basically beginning instantly after the training workshop in February of 2020. So in-person training, which was going to be intense and, and continuous over the course of the project, had to be postponed indefinitely as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. We had planned to return to Nassau in summer of 2020, in October, in the spring of 2021, summer 2021, et cetera. And all of these trips have been canceled. So we had to find new ways to keep progressing and continue training. And luckily this, this concept of continued training and dialogue between researcher and transcriber and team members has worked very well and has resulted in a lot of good progress, but it has been a different kind of process than what was originally envisioned with the original workshop. It wasn't meant to be a standalone training workshop after which there was no follow-up. Um, so that's been a, a major challenge. So remote collaboration has been difficult. There is obviously a lot of, uh, there can be lapses in communication, miscommunication, which takes time and a lot of energy to resolve. And the training in new techniques, like uh, was described in the last slide, is difficult and slower and uh, takes more time when it's done remotely. Also, there have been uh, adjustments to the transcription conventions and the Buku Panduan, which meant the need for the new addendum to the Buku Panduan. And this was challenging because it meant that there would be corrections to the previous files, which need to be done and will take a lot of work. And also um, the sudden change in workflow for the transcribers can be jarring and it takes time to adjust. However, despite all these challenges, the project continues and has led to some very promising outcomes. So, so far as of this recording, since last February, there have already been 24 conversations transcribed and translated into Indonesian uh, in South Barisan, Malay, in Kaur, and in Nassau. Uh, 
Um, and this is really great progress, and it's what we were hoping to see as a result of this, this training. Um, also, the Nasal and Kawur files are glossed with Indonesian word glosses in Flex, and there are a lot of things in progress that are continuing as a part of this workflow. So the transcription continues in each language, uh, and this, this process of feedback and dialogue is ongoing. There's also a process of mor morpheme level glossing and translation in Flex, which is a collaborative effort between the researchers and the transcribers. It's not so much transcription, but a discussion of the conversation on a more detailed level. And this usually happens over Skype or Zoom. And then there's this process of revisiting and refining the previous files according to new conventions. Uh, and the creation of new audiovisual materials as a result of the new training with uh, new equipment. In conclusion, this we've realized that it's the relationships between different uh, members of this team that are really crucial for the success of this project. Um, while other training efforts typically provided training to a wide variety of people from different speech communities, this one was designed to build capacity by working in a single community over the long term. So this is designed to strengthen relationships and and facilitate a long-term project that has strong working relationships and can result in better language maintenance efforts and research in the future. And these relationships exist on many different levels from international scholars to experienced scholars who have these techniques and training in the software in Indonesia, junior scholars who really benefit from this bi-directional learning model and the members of the community who are participating it to different degrees. And these relationships are what form the foundation of this kind of project. Finally, I'd like to thank uh, and acknowledge different parties that really contributed to this project. Uh, most importantly, the Nasal speech community in Tanjung Batua, Gedung Manung, and Tanjung Baru, the villages in Sumatra. Also, RISTEC for allowing us to conduct research in Indonesia. Um, this Center for Language and Culture Studies, or LIPI, uh, LIPI and Atmajaya, and the National Science Foundation. Thank you very much.